Hello and welcome to Orchard Park Presbyterian Church. It's so good to be worshiping the Lord with you this morning. As we begin to worship, I have a few announcements. First, we extend Christian sympathy and support to the family and friends of George Chisler, our dear friend and brother in Christ who went home to be with the Lord this past week. This past Friday, services were held here in the sanctuary. Uh, and this coming Monday, in observance of the 4th of July holiday, the building will be closed. Uh, happy 4th of July uh, weekend to all of you. A couple adult education opportunities I'd like to highlight. The first is Sunday school. Uh, at noon for adults is a Galatians Bible study. You can find the Zoom invitation on the Friday email for that. The second is this coming Wednesday, July 8th, is a conversation on faith and race. Uh, Pastor Trish and myself will be facilitating that conversation, uh, which is an opportunity to, uh, to have that conversation. We had one about a week ago. We're having a follow-up and more to come. So now let us all worship the Lord our God together. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. 
From generation to generation, he is our God. Let us worship the Lord. These are difficult times that leave us searching for something consistent, something to anchor us, something to help us as we all continued in these uncharted territories. We confess that our anxiety can cause us to act in ways that are not our best selves. We give thanks for Jesus' support of our burdens and his forgiveness when we act in ways that are contrary to our faith. Trusting in the grace of Christ, we offer this prayer of confession. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, we are so skilled at being in control, at taking charge. We are not so very good at resting or in trusting you. We think we have to be constantly busy, which leaves us with no time for you. We are trained to be productive, so we create our harried, stress-filled lives. Forgive us, God. Help us to let go of our distractions so you can act in us. Help us to let go of our need for control. Center us so you can recreate us. Help us to follow Jesus in all that we say and do. We take a moment now to offer our silent confession. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Broken, we are made whole. Longing for a renewed relationship with God, we are welcomed with open arms by the one who forgives us. Without a doubt, God's love never comes to an end. Grace and peace are ours. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. We take a moment now to greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with each other this day and with all those who whom we speak with and encounter this week. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning, girls and boys. It's so good to be worshiping the Lord with you today. I wonder, do you ever have to work really hard at something? Or does your mom and dad maybe even have like a tool bag that they keep special tools in for certain jobs like a hammer or a screwdriver? Have you ever used one of those? Well, I want to talk about a tool today that Jesus says helps make our work easier. It even makes it fun. It even makes hard work really enjoyable. That tool is love. When we love something, working hard on it can be actually quite fun, but especially when we love the people that we are working with, well, then work becomes really fun. And it doesn't mean that you always like everything that everybody does. Love is bigger than that. Love includes being patient with people, sharing with them, forgiving them when they've hurt you, and asking for forgiveness when you've hurt someone else. That tool, love, in all of those ways, is the tool that Jesus gives us to do all the work that we're being asked to do by God, by our parents, and by whoever asks us to work with them. So wherever you go, whatever job you've been asked to do, be sure to bring love along with you. Amen.
Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19, and again, verses 25 through 30. Hear these words of Jesus. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. John the Baptist and Jesus have worked their tails off for God, each of them very differently, each of them throwing everything they had at the task that they were assigned by God, which was to open the doors to God's kingdom. John tried the cattle prodding method to get them in. He was a fire and brimstone kind of guy. Jesus tried the way of attraction He performed miracles, healing the sick, welcoming the outcast, astounding displays of wisdom. And the response? Crickets. Apathy. (laughs) I've read stories of commercial cinematic flops. The amount of time, talent, and treasure that it takes to bring a single movie to the big screen or the little screen these days is astronomical. And within the first day or so, it's clear whether or not it was worth it. The recent movie adaptation of the musical, Cats, comes to mind. All that hard work, all that talent, all that money, and it was a total flop. That's how Jesus and John must have felt at this point in their ministry. Have you ever experienced that kind of failure? It can be utterly devastating. However, in God's wisdom, failure can be the perfect condition for God's grace. And so what is Jesus' response to what appears to be failure for what looks like fruitless labor? Well, that's what I'd like to consider today as we dig into this passage. First, Jesus' response is thanksgiving. Well, how can that be? How can he be thankful for what appears to be a failure? Well, the answer to this is found in the Old Testament and throughout the scriptures. Uh, In the book of Isaiah, Jesus sees what appears to have been God's plan, and he has that in mind. And we read in Isaiah, This is the one to whom I will look, to the humble and contrite in spirit, who trembles at my word. 
and elsewhere. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite. Jesus is grateful that the ones who are humble, that those who are open-handed and open-minded are the ones to whom God has revealed himself. What appears to be a lackluster response to John and Jesus' ministry is actually God's plan in action. The proud are uninterested and apathetic. The humble receive the good news with open arms. The lesson for us is simple. Hearing God requires humility. God opposes the proud, the scriptures say, but gives grace to the humble. This idea runs throughout scripture. The second point is that when we have God questions or life questions, we are to look to Jesus in the face of failure. Jesus is God's answer to our questions. Jesus is God's fulfillment of all the promises throughout Scripture. Jesus is the answer to our prayers for understanding, for strength, for hope, for direction, for peace. Now, just because he is the answer does not mean that we can proudly strut around as if we have all the answers. We possess nothing. We are possessed by God. We belong to God. We are his. And all that we have is but a gift given out of God's free grace. Whenever we let pride take hold, as if we have all the answers, well, there is an old saying for that. Those who think they have God by the toe have the devil by the fist. It is precisely those who are lowly, humble, little ones that are given the eternal gift of knowing and experiencing God in Jesus Christ. The third response of Jesus to apparent failure is an invitation. Come here to me, all you who are struggling and carrying too much, who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Jesus invites those who are having a hard time of it, those for whom life is hard work, those of us who feel overwhelmed. Another translation says, come to me, all you who are fatigued and overwhelmed. Jesus is saying that his kingdom is like a hospital for those who are at the end of their physical, spiritual, emotional resources. Consider these words from Psalm 145. The Lord upholds those who are falling, raises up those who are bowed down. The great teacher, Dale Bruner, sums it up well. He says, Jesus' invitation goes out to all for whom life has become a grind, for whom existence is laborious, to those, in a word, from whom the juice of life and all that's left is a rind. Jesus' heart goes out to them. Those who have given it everything, they have and are feeling like a wet rag, and they have little to show for it. Jesus offers them help. He says, here, take my yoke upon you. Now, a yoke is a work instrument, and it may seem like a funny thing to give someone who is falling over exhausted at the end of a job an instrument of work. <laughs> you might think Jesus would offer a vacation or a hammock, but Jesus realizes that sometimes the most restful gift that can be given is a new way to carry life, a fresh way to bear responsibilities. It's said of this passage that instead of offering escape, Jesus here offers equipment. He offers us tools for the job. The yoke being offered here is his word, his teachings, his way of life. It is the companionship of himself and each other. It's the gift of never being alone in whatever work the Lord has given us. The hard work is made bearable 
only through the yoke of love. Loving something, loving someone makes working hard for it or them not only bearable, but enjoyable. And so thanks be to God that we are given the restful yoke of working for God and one another in all humility, never alone, always upheld by the steadfast love of God and the presence of Jesus Christ and our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. In a world shaped by conflict, where we seem to be slipping back into tribal divisions, you call us to welcome those with whom we have absolutely nothing in common. In a culture full of inequalities, which only seem to be widening, you call us to treat each person as our sister and brother. In a time of intensifying injustices, which are found in every community, you call us to yoke ourselves to your radical hope. Help us to notice those who are struggling. Help us to care for the bereaved and the brokenhearted. Help us to lift up your people. May we offer what Jesus offers us a burden shared by many rather than one, the offer of rest for all your people, the gift of grace for all. We offer this prayer in the name of your loving Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Living with gratitude and generosity is difficult to do in uncertain and anxious times. Yet the story of our faith is that God is with us. The challenge for us is to be generous despite our circumstances. We trust in God, so let us humbly offer our gifts.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Thank you.